I thought for a minute you'd been hit in the mouth with a board or something from the sawmill, but, know, but, but yeah. it's looking better. Are we there yet? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Trina has some masks. You could. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Chapel Outreach. We are extremely glad to see everybody here this morning, yes. bright and, and cheerful and God blessed. Uh, I'm praying that everybody had a really, um, I found out that uh, over the week I went in and had sleep tests, found out I have sleep apnea. They fitted me with a mask and boom. My blood pressure is dropping, and I'm doing much better. So praise God. Uh, you know, we were praying they'd find out whatever the problem was. So, it's, yeah, it's just learning to sleep with it. It's kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and then it has an exhaust, and so I almost froze my husband out yeah, last night. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway, we'll all get used to it, I guess. So, uh, but praise God that there was a solution and uh, we found it. So, we, I'm expecting as I'm on this more and more that my blood pressure will drop lower and lower and pretty soon the blood pressure medicine will just all be gone. So, yeah, so we're thanking God. He's, amen. So, he's always so good to just... Find a solution for us, no matter what it is. Okay, and we will turn the section, and uh, uh, we'll just praise God for a while. Oh no, 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 no! <laughs> oh no, no solo for me. <laughs> Thank you, God. Oh, yeah, light's much better. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you're doing in our, in our lives, Lord God. And Lord God, we just... What's that? Can you play stuff on your phone? Oh, oh. oh it's just like, okay. <laughs> What do I, I hear something. Oh. All right, that you are. Speak a little louder. <laughs> so, Lord, I, I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, Lord God. And I thank you for, for your grace, Lord God. I thank you for sustaining us, Lord God. And, Lord, we lift up just that has suffered such from, yes. from this flooding, whether they have lost have damages to their livelihood, to their homes, Lord God. The young gal and the... Her son that had died over at Megafu, Lord God, we just, Lord God, we just pour out, just pour out your Holy Spirit and comfort, Lord God, and just draw them that you, that you are the answer, Lord God, that, that they could have assurance of where they're going if we don't know how many days we have on this earth, Lord God. So we just... We just cry out that people would, would turn their hearts, that they would soften their hearts and don't know whether we just think we're driving out of the parking lot and can't see where we're going and and then it's over, Lord God. And and so, Lord God, we just ask that you would just use us to draw people to you, to cry out to you, to that you are salvation, that we could have reassurance of eternal life, Lord God. Lord God, just comfort those, Lord God, and, and just let the churches of this valley, Lord, rise up and not just be like, oh, I'm, I'm safe, but, but to, to ha be your hands and feet that extend to those that have, that now that they have, we've survived this, but Lord, so many people, the whole town of Turner is flooded, Lord God, that people would rise up 
and come and help them clean and come alongside them and and love on them lord god just stir up the body of christ to not be selfish lord god and show us where where we could help lord god whether if we don't have any money we have time we have energy we we all have something that we could give lord god and, and let this be a wake-up call lord god that as as times are getting harder and things are happening lord god that we need you lord god and let your light shine through us that that people around us will look to us and go what what do they have i i want that and that it would be so bright it would be like that beacon it would be like that lighthouse lord god that that as everything's being shaken that we don't have to be we don't have to be devastated that our strength is in you god and so we just thank you, Lord God, for another day on this earth, Lord God. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our lives, Lord God. We thank you for all that you provide. Thank you, God. <clears throat> okay, we're going to be at page one.
just give us hearts that are soft, Lord God, that we'd be ready to do your will, Lord God, whatever you ask, not like, oh, I don't want to do that, that's, that's uncomfortable, but we want to be ready, Lord God. When you say go, go to the left, go to the right, Lord God, we want to be ready. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, so five middle. Page 11. Thank you. Lord God, we thank you that we could trust you, Lord God. Yes. We thank you that your word is a, a, 
as our foundation, Lord God. We thank you that you are God and that you're not man, that you lie, Lord God. So help us to line up with you, Lord God. Help us to put your word in our heart that we could trust you, Lord God. so worthy and then we just praise you Lord God Lord God we thank you that you are our strength and there is none other Lord God thank you and this is um, you are my hiding place but it's not in there I forgot to copy it so Deep 
ability it's not our own power Lord God that that we have to admit that we are that we are weak Lord God that we don't have it Lord God when we have no control over the rivers and, and flooding and all the things that have happened Lord God but we could cry out to you Lord God and you can make us strong Lord God in your strength Lord God and we give you all the glory because it's not of our great wisdom or a great skill but it is your strength Lord God yes. so we praise you Lord God Thank you. 12 sorry
Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit's like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. God, we just lift up what the enemy has tried to bring against this valley, Lord God. All the strife, all the everything that when people stress out because they've lost all their stuff, Lord God. We thank you that you are eternal life, Lord God. And we pray for unity, Lord God, that, that you would use this to bring your yes. body together, Lord God, that we look past our differences, Lord God, that you are the reason, Lord God, and we love yes. you, Lord God, for all that you did on the cross, Lord God. Yes. Thank you. So we just ask that you would just knit our hearts together, Lord God, yes. to put our differences aside, Lord yes. God, Thank and help us to see you yes. that we love inside of everybody, Lord God, even if we have differences that we know are yes. our brothers in the Lord love you too lord god and that and then we just give all this to you lord god and help us to pull together lord god we love you jesus Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that beautiful time of worship. Give you praise and glory for that. We have uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, there's going to be revival here in April, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, Heaven's Connection will be meeting here at the Montgomery Center. Uh, they'll be uh, preaching and singing the Word of God. The service will start 7 p.m. nightly, and there will be a love offering taken. Also, there is a conference. Jeff, when is that? This weekend? Next weekend? In Eureka? Uh, there's a conference in Eureka, the 3rd, 4th, and 5th, February, and you can contact Sunshine outreach ministries for the dates and time and uh, uh, the itinerary on that. Uh, we'll open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God and not us. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, that you can take every situation and turn it to your good. We thank you, Father, for uh, this time to come together and worship you and praise your name and lord we ask father that you just anoint each and every one of us and that uh, you will engraft the words to our heart the holy spirit will bring enlightenment to us and that love lord will abound to each and every one of us thank you father in jesus name uh, we are going to be starting at Matthew 9, 16.
No man putting a piece of new cloth into an old garment for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse. No, neither do men put new wine into old bottles or wineskins, else the wineskins break and the wine runneth out and the wineskins perish. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. If you've ever done any sewing, you can't take a piece of cloth that hasn't been pre-shrunk or washed and put it to patch something and then wash it and that cloth shrinks and tears away from the old and so then you have a big hole. So it hasn't done any good to do that. Uh, and if anyone has ever had a saddle or any kind of leather where they, you have to keep it uh, uh, pliable. You have to put something on it, leather, soap or whatever to keep it pliable. If you don't, it cracks and breaks. So if you take an old wine skin that's hard and brittle and try to put wine in it, and wine has a tendency to uh, expand, it will break it and you'll lose the wine and the wine skin. I believe that what Jesus is trying to say to us there is we can't take these old bodies and put the Holy Spirit in them. You have to become new. You have to be born again. You have to become new to put the Holy Spirit in. Otherwise, we would die. If the holiness of God came into our old sinful bodies, it really would kill us. Just like the wineskin. We just, you know. So, what he's, and, and before this, it was the Pharisees were talking to him about how come they didn't fast and John's disciples fasted. Away. There was always something the Pharisees had that was wrong with what Jesus' ministry was. So I think this was sort of a slight toward them. We, you can't take old stuff and put new in it. You can't take the old and put new in it. And so we go over to Mark. It has the same scripture. 2.21 No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment, else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old, and as the rent is made worse. And no man puts new wine into old wineskins, else the new wine does burst the bottles, or burst the wineskins, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins will be marred. But new wine must be put in new wineskins. Just, again, you have to become born again. You have to become new. You can try to clean yourself up. You can try, okay, I'm going to quit smoking, I'm going to quit drinking, I'm going to quit cussing, I'm going to quit, quit, quit. I'm going to make a New Year's resolution, I'm going to lose weight. I'm... It's not going to work unless you become new. We can try to live like God intends us to live, but if we haven't been born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not going to be able to do it. There isn't any way the old can be anything but old. It has to, it has to become new in order for you to be able to live the way Christ wants you to live. Nothing that we can do of ourselves can make us saved or can get us to heaven. It's all of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So although we may try to live a good life, and there are a lot of uh, people who say, well, are you going to heaven? Well, I haven't done anything that bad. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Well, I don't need that. You do need that. If you don't have that, you're not going to heaven. If you don't have that, you will not be able to live the life that you want to live. Amen. You will not have a life full of joy and peace, and you will not be able to get along with people. You will not. There, with Jesus Christ, there is no limit to what he can do in you and that you can do being his hands and feet on this earth. But if you try to do it in your own, you will always fall. You will always fail. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much you want to, 
That's just the nature of the old man. Because the old man is born with sin, and sin will always come up to the top and triumph unless it has been done away with. If you have a dog that bites, no matter how much training you do to that dog, he's going to bite. And if you don't put him down, he's going to bite. Same way with sin. If you don't destroy it, do away with it, with the blood of Jesus Christ, it's always going to come up and it's always going to do something that's going to upset you or somebody else. It just That's just the nature of sin. It's evil. You can't just wash it over and say, oh, well, I made a bad choice. No, sin is sin. It's evil. It's disgusting. It needs to be done away with. And the only way it's done away with is in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that takes sin and cleanses and does away with it. Going over to Luke 5, we have sort of the same story, but a little bit different. Starting with verse 36. Well, we'll go up to 33 and I'll read this. And these are the publicans talking here. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? Likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees and thine eat and drink. So, okay, we're just, you know, why, why don't you do what we do? Why don't you fast? Why don't you do all these things? And he said unto them, Can you make the children of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they sh- then shall they fast in those days. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man puts a piece of new garment upon an old. Otherwise, if Otherwise, then both the new makes a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agrees not with the old. So you can't take a brand new cloak, rip a piece out of it, and put it on an old cloak. First of all, then you got a hole in your new cloak, and you got a patch that doesn't match your old cloak. It's, you know, and it's sort of a slight to the Pharisees. You can't, I can't come and put the Holy Spirit of God into you because you are old and you won't accept me. You won't accept my teachings. So all the time you're always, you know, putting me down about everything, you know, putting me down, putting me down. And that's the old man, the old man coming up there, the old man saying, we're Pharisees, we know the law. We, and we as, as children of God, need to remember what the Pharisees did and not do that. Somebody comes into our body, brand new baby Christian, don't start laying a whole bunch of stuff on them. Let God do the teaching. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, to bring them along, to teach them. Um, And we aren't the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And no man puts new wine into old wineskins, else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled, and the wineskins shall perish. But new wine must be put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. No man, having drunk old wine, straightway desires new, for he says the old is better. Talk to somebody that you want to give Jesus Christ to. And they will come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, my life is good. Well, you know, then I'd have to quit doing this and this. Oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I don't, I mean, I don't go out and murder people. Uh, yeah. So it's like, oh, the old life is good enough. The old life is better than the new life. I'd have to actually make a change. What they don't understand because of a lot of, preaching that change, 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 what they don't understand, if you accept Jesus Christ, he does the changing. 
if you allow the Holy Spirit to come in, he's the one that will change you into, into what he has for you. When you were conceived, God had a plan. He had a plan for each and every individual. And when you accept Jesus Christ, then he begins to work that plan and bring you to the place that he always intended you to be. And he didn't intend for you to be miserable, but he intended you to live in joy and peace. And he intended to be your father. Some of us haven't had very good fathers. Some of us have had really good fathers. But he wants to be the best father you have ever seen. He wants to be that father that will love you and care for you, pick you up when you fall, and bring you into a place of love and peace and joy. You are born with certain attributes that God put in you. And until you come to Jesus Christ, those attributes will never be fulfilled. You'll try to do a lot of things, but you won't ever be fulfilled or filled with joy until you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And then, uh, if you don't fight against him, if you go with him and follow him, and let him lead you, you will come to a place of absolute peace and joy. No matter what's going on around you, you will have that inner peace, that inner joy, that inner, I know God is in control, and I know he can take care of me. And if I live, I live. If I die, I'm in heaven. So it doesn't matter, like Paul says, whether I live or die, you know, I'll serve Jesus Christ. And so... If there's anyone here or anyone out there that has never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, we offer that gift to you. Jesus Christ offers that gift to you. He offers you peace, joy, and salvation. He offers you a home in heaven and peace while you're here on earth. And so all you need to do is just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, I invite you to take over my life. I just give it to you, and you do whatever you want with it. And that's it. It's just that simple. And I know when I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life, I said, I have made an absolute mess of my life. And so I need someone to take this over and straighten it out because there's no way every time I turn around, I've done something else that made a bigger mess. So, and he did. Took my life, changed me, filled me with his Holy Spirit, gave me a joy, gave me a desire to just love people. Uh, Yeah, and it's, Even when it's hard to love people, Jesus will put that desire within you to love people, no matter what they do. And that's what we need to do, because this whole world is looking for love. I mean, they look for love in all the wrong places, in the bars, in sex, in whatever. But the only true love comes from God himself through Jesus Christ. Yes, and no conditions. He just accepts you exactly where you are, no matter what you've done. He will take that, and he will make you new. Is there anyone that needs prayer this morning? Okay. Yes, we need prayer. (laughs) You want to come up?
heal her. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we call this blood sugar into life. Yes. You know exactly what it should be, what the level should be, Lord Jesus. And we cause this blood sugar in the name of Jesus yes. to come in line and to be exactly what it needs to be. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Father, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And Father, if there's something that Pat needs to eat, just give her that wisdom. And uh, you have know our physical bodies, Father. So we just ask that you take care of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else say prayer? Uh, there is a, a woman that ministers in Alaska by the name of Crystal Scott. She and her husband have an amazing ministry up there. They went from Florida to Alaska. Imagine that. Why would somebody go from the palm beaches of Florida to deep freeze. the deep freeze Thank you of Alaska? Well, they did because they felt God calling them there. They've had three near misses on their way home from ministering in the native village of Tanacross. One was with a caribou, one was with a moose, and one was when a car veered across the road and almost hit him. And they've been very, very close near misses. And she's asking for uh, prayer of protection because God is really starting to move in the small village. Uh, yesterday they had 11 children come to the kids' church. Now these are tiny, you, these are tiny Alaskan villages where nobody wants to go because it's 50, 60 degrees below zero and there's not that many people there. But they have a heart, and, and uh, on the first of the year, God spoke to Crystal, she says, to her heart prophetically. And God said, for the enemy has been frustrated over your presence in Alaska. He has been unable to stop you, and he will be unable to stop you or hinder my move in and through you, for this is a time of destiny. So Crystal is asking us to join with her in a prayer of agreement for God's protection and deliverance as the enemy is trying to stop her work because she's there harvesting souls and one soul is is incalculable to the to the body of christ um, so many times ministries go to where there's the numbers are but i just love people that just go to where the people are mm -hmm. and are willing to go to 80 below zero weather in alaska from from hawaii you know that is a person that we that i love to partner with so i'm just asking that we Stand in prayer. Up, uh, Crystal, we, we, th we thank you, Lord, for her ministry. We thank you for these souls that are coming to Jesus Christ through what she says. And, Lord, we ask your angels to encamp round about her, protect her, keep her safe, Lord, keep her warm, and bring many more people into, this, into the kingdom, Father, through her mi ministry and witness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Else? All right, on that note, uh, either uh, Jeff, could you come up and give announcements? And uh, may everybody be blessed and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> but uh, the announcements for this week is uh, we'll be at Miracle Healing Streams tonight at 6 at 2020 48th Street Southeast, Albany, Oregon, 97322. And then um, Thursday night, we will not have worship and prayer. We have a wedding here that we'll be doing for Dave and Diana Rupert. So um, be in prayer for that, and then Sunday we'll be here for Faith Chapel.
Um, we have updated the website, so now not only you don't have to go to YouTube anymore to watch the videos, they're on our website on the home church page. And then uh, as soon as we get thing, this converted and uploaded, that'll be on, we have a space for the newest video, so that'll be there. And God is just uh, doing great things. Uh, we, from last Thursday night, my wife forgot to add that we've already had people call for prayer that call for prayer, and someone did receive Jesus last Thursday. Okay? So, uh, you know, God's using the tools that, we're, that he's given us, and we are making a difference online for him, all for his glory. So let's keep it up, people. God bless you, and we love you. One more thing, make it real quick. Uh, we have a, an online radio station called the Jesus Network, and uh, Jeff actually started DJing on the Jesus Network last night. So if you, it's uh, the website is tjn1.fm, and uh, we're also we have some. Uh, we're going to have links on Sunshine Outreach Ministries and our website, which is what I just told you. We have a vision for opening a youth outreach center in Albany. And uh, we want to use it as a base for other ministries to come in and use the facility for meetings, and we want to reach the youth. God's put a, put a passion on Patty's heart, Jeff's heart, on my heart for the youth. Because the youth, if Jesus Christ doesn't come back, the youth are the generation that's going to carry the torch forward. We have got to reach the youth. It's, it's not an option. Uh, we've got to do it. And so... Um, You'll be able to find out more as, as this dream develops. We believe God's put it on our heart very strongly. And uh, for people to pray with us and financially partner with us, we know times are tough. And one of the things I absolutely despise doing is asking for money. Um, but And we're just going to believe God. And for people that want to partner with us, there's no guilt involved. It's just like this is the vision God's put on our heart strongly. And uh, the most thing, the biggest thing we need is prayer. So, more to come. So, thank you.